What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the POCO F5 5G and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest USB SK ROM and it's been a long time that I was actually willing to try this ROM and finally I made the switch and this is the USB SK version is 1.4 and this is based on Android 14 and the build date here is of 12th December 2023 and there are a couple of notes right here that you can check and if you don't know how to flash this ROM on your POCO A5, you can check out the flashing guide from the description. In the Android version section, this is how it looks like. We have the Android version as 14, codename is Uri, and we have the developer as Saikiran. So huge thanks to the developers of this ROM. And the security patch right here, you can see it's December 5th, 2023. So that's latest pretty much. 5.10 melt kernel. And here is the build date, 12th December, 2023. And here is the build number. And right here in the about phone section, you will get this battery info. And if you go into it, you will get the charging cycles, which shows the cycle count of your battery. For me, right now it shows as 236 cycles, but I wish this battery information actually showed up in the battery settings. You will get this particular thing in the about phone section. In the system settings, we have the system UI tuner and stuff. And in here, you can enable or disable Bluetooth and the other icons. We have the system updater as well. And from here, you can check for updates. This looks pretty good. It has that line OS kind of look, I would say in the updated section. In the advanced settings, you will get the unlimited Google photo storage toggle. So you can enable it if you want to. Let me go back. We have the status bar kind of settings. We have the network traffic indicator. You can use it if you want, but I use a separate app for that. That is working fine for me. We have the show 4G icon and the data disabled icon and the double tap to sleep. Brightness slider, you can have it on show always and the position to the bottom. Then we have the auto brightness and the quick pull down and stuff. And the background transparency looks really good. Let me actually show you. As you can see, the quick setting panel background transparency is actually working perfectly fine. You can also enable quick pull down to right or left. And in the button section, we have the navigation mode right here. And in the settings of it, we have the edge long swipe actions. Pretty much huge options are there. We have the gesture indicator, then the IME button space, and we have the pill length and radius customization. And with maximum on both of these, this is how long and thick it looks like. We have the swipe to invoke assistant. You can use it if you want. Let me show you. Yeah, it is actually working fine. Edge touch area and stuff. Let me go back. We have the three button navigation. And in the settings of it, we have the hold for assistant as well. Then we have the press and hold power button action. And in here, you will get the advanced reboot options. And we have the menu shortcuts as well. Then we have the power button and call. And the quick torch is also there. Then we have the wake device and the answer call, control playback, and the click to quick virtual screenshot. In the gestures, we have the quickly open camera and stuff. Then the navigation mode is, of course, there. Then we have the one handed mode that is actually working fine, I guess. Yes, it is working. Let me go back. We have the lift to check phone as well. You can enable both of these if you want to. And we have the press and hold power button action again. And then we have the swipe trick screenshot. Let me actually show you. Yes, it does work perfectly fine. We have the share, edit, delete, and the Google Lens feature. Capture mode should be appearing when it's needed. And there is the quick torch option as well. Then we have the prevent ring option. And you also get a USB configuration separate tab and you can set it to file transfer for convenience. Now let's talk about the home screen. Well, this is how it looks like. And this is like a pixel launcher pretty much, of course. And let me actually show you the settings of it. It's very minimal. It only has the session disabling option and stuff. In the launcher settings, there is no app lock. And even in the normal settings, there is no app lock. I couldn't find the app lock, but that's fine as of now. And to the left of the home screen, we have the Google's Discover page. Swiping up will get you to the app drawer. Swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel. In the dark theme, this is how it looks like. And if you just straight up disable the dark theme, this is how it looks like. Yes, the quick setting panel still stays dark, but that's totally fine. And in the light theme, I would say the background transparency looks a little bit better in my opinion. If you're noticing this part looks like this blurry frosted glass kind of effect. In the widgets, it shows the phone's battery and the Bluetooth battery perfectly fine. In the battery widget, no problems. And the clock widget and stuff, everything is working fine. In the music widget and the subscriber account widget that I add actually are working perfectly fine. No problems with the widgets. But double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen is not there, but it is there in the status bar that is actually working fine. Let's just unlock the device. And auto brightness, I have actually seen it's working perfectly fine. And in the quick setting panel, this is how it looks like. I have added the Wi-Fi, mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle and the flashlight and stuff. The Google Home controls, auto rotate, battery saver, screen recording and stuff is there. We have the HEVC and all other features like the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time. Hotspot, data saver, dark theme and the nightlight, the extra dim heads up, always on display, you can toggle it for charging as well. And we have the airplane mode, then the do not disturb QR code scanner and mic and camera privacy kind of shutter is there. The brightness slider showing up on the bottom because I have customized it that way. And in the power menu, this is how it looks like. If I tap on restart, I can directly route to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Talking about the stock camera, this is how it looks like. And it has the lens switching option and stuff. Everything is working fine, as you can see. All the lenses are working. And in the video settings, you can, of course, go up to 4K and 60 FPS with the rear camera. So no problems with that. 
even in the front camera you can go and shoot up to 1080p 60fps yes that is actually working fine no problems even in the portrait mode i would say the front camera stuff everything is working fine no problems and in the like documents mode and stuff enhanced options are there then in the pro mode you can shoot pro mode videos again up to 4k 60fps overall it's a leica camera version 5 so no problems whatsoever with this particular camera it is working great i'll show you some samples on the screen so that you can get an idea but yeah this is really good that we are getting this leica camera version 5 right out of the box in this particular rom now in this custom rom there is no separate customization settings but the customizations are inside each of the settings like if I go into the display settings and right here, you will get the headline and body fonts, icon shapes, etc. So this is how the customizations are organized in this ROM. I'll show you all of those. But first of all, let me show you the basic things. Yes, the DM info shows as L1. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p in this ROM. And in terms of play integrity check, well, it shows this meets basic integrity. But yeah, banking apps and stuff, I have tried. They are working fine. And in the Google Photos, if you enable that unlimited photos backup toggle, you will see this pixel can backup unlimited photos and videos feature. And in the Bluetooth kind of settings, if I go into the Bluetooth settings, we have this audio device type. It shows these kind of settings i don't know why it shows unknown but if i select headphones it just selects to headphones so that's fine and the special audio option is there in the bluetooth device kind of settings and it is i think actually is working and we have the hd audio aac and the normal kind of bluetooth stuff let's go to the apps and in here if i show you this cloned apps of course is there this is the dual apps of android 14 you can use two accounts for whatsapp or stuff like that and in the notifications options we have this flash notification as well so you can enable these and this is how a notification will appear if you enable this and we also have the island notification right here so you can turn it on and you can also get the now playing option enabled if you want to in the battery settings this is how it looks like we have the battery percentage right here we have the performance mode you can turn it on from here battery usage and the thermal profiles are there as well and you can set per apps thermal profiles to these many options and we have benchmark and stuff so you can set it per app we have the battery saver as well you can enable it if you want then we have the status bar indicator these are for the battery style on the status bar but i would say it's very minimal like lineage or something like that fill circle and stuff then the icon portrait i have been using it with the icon portrait working fine the ios style and stuff are not simply present and we have the battery percentage right here you can choose it next to the icon or inside the icon we have the idle manager and there is the battery temperature so the battery temperature actually shows up but there is no battery health thing over here in the battery settings and the charging cycles also does not show up in this particular section it shows up in that about section which i just showed you now let's talk battery life well in here i have tested it with aku battery app my estimated screen on time here shows as 9 hours and 12 minutes screen off or the standby time you could say it shows as about 56 or 57 hours so that's huge and even the combine use shows as 17 hours so yeah it will definitely give you a whole day of worth of usage the battery life that i'm getting is really good no issues so far and in the health section my battery health shows up as 88 percent and yes the fast charging and stuff everything is working perfectly fine no problems whatsoever in case you are wondering about the fast charging and the charging animation actually looks really good i have to say now in the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like we have the media call ring etc volume controls we have the do not disturb the phone ringtone and stuff smart pause the spatial audio option is also there and we have the vibration and haptics and we have even more settings right here we have the dial per tone screen locking sound charging sound and vibration but have volume control and we have the vibrate to indicate call status and the vibrate on brightness slider and stuff like that we also have the dolby atmos right here and i have to talk about this because i was actually testing it and these are the things i have enabled with the dolby atmos i have been using it with the dynamic profile and in terms of equalizer i didn't change it much with the other options i didn't actually notice any kind of huge difference we have the surround virtualizer i have enabled that and the stereo widening i have selected it to medium and the dialogue enhancer i have it to turned off and we have the bass enhancer and the volume leveler i have both of these enabled so with all of these i would say the sound quality on this rom is just awesome i have to say this is one of the most amazing sound experience that i have got with all of these with the dolby atmos even with a bluetooth device i have to say the sound quality has been really really good i have been enjoying music really really well with all of these with the dolby atmos kind of thing so that's really awesome in this room i have to say we also have the clear speaker option as well so you can use it if you want one thing i do not really like in this android 14 roms is that the volume panel looks like this you do not get a switching option the bluetooth device switching option over here right in the volume panel like you used to get in the android 13 drums maybe in future we'll get that but as of right now this is how it is and one thing i have to mention that like while i was playing music i actually got a call then i just received that 
and after that i saw the dialer is for stopping for some reason i think it has to do with the surround kind of sound or the special audio kind of thing or even the dolby atmos i am not really not sure but yeah that problem i have faced and by the way as you can see with the dialer you can record the calls and there is a video call option and stuff you can use those if you want so for now it's a fail i couldn't actually show you that bug but yeah i have only once faced that force close of the stock dialer while i got a call once i was playing music in the display settings we have the brightness level add up to brightness extra dim feature and we also have the lock screen kind of settings and in here we have the use device control and we have the lock screen charging info and the dynamic clock always on display scheduling option is there then we have the double tap to check phone lift to check phone and the ambient display is also there you can use this hand wave pocket mode etc and for the lift to check phone i have this ambient wake gesture and stuff enabled we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes and there is the screen attention then the dark theme is there and from here you can have this black theme option or the pitch black option and in terms of headline and body fonts these are the options you will get it's a very minimal kind of customizations you will get and there is the icon shapes also there are the icon packs as well and there is the display size and text and from here you can enable the bold text and stuff if you want to and here is the dpi customization and we have the night light you can change the intensity of it once you enable that we have the live display and the color calibration options are there let me go back the colors you can change it to natural boosted saturated adaptive etc and we have the auto red screen and the minimum and maximum refresh rate you can actually change from here full screen apps options are there then we have the double tap to wake prevent accidental wake up or the pocket detection also is there and the double tap to sleep wake up on plug enable blur and the show data usage in quick setting panel and per app refresh rate you can set actually to 60 or 120 hertz so the display settings is huge in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like and there are the android 14 kind of clocks just notice how beautiful it looks and you can also go with the other clocks if you want to just notice these many options are there and there is the more wallpaper section where you will get the minerals the come alive and stuff then the living universe wallpapers you can download them and there are even more wallpapers like the textures and stuff everything is there no issues the wallpapers over here are looking really really nice i have to say and there's the shortcuts you can change the left and right shortcut from here i'll just select this to flashlight and in terms of the lock screen shortcuts as well as you can see they are working fine like the google home controls and even the flashlight you can toggle it on or off from the lock screen as well but you have to tap and hold on the shortcuts to actually get it to work and in the home screen settings this is how it looks like we have the themed icons right here and in the app grid you can set the apps to 5x5 five five, i mean the grid and if i just enable the themed icons if i go home as you can see this is how the themed icons actually looks like looks pretty beautiful i have to say i'll show you the lock screen clock style and stuff in the always on display and stuff but first let me just go into the security and in the device unlock this is how it looks like in the settings of it we have the scramble pin layout and stuff quick unlock is not there now i did a mistake in the previous video of the evolution xtrom that i set up face unlock and it just didn't work because i got to know from the comments from you guys that you have to set up the face unlock and reboot the device afterwards the face unlock will work so i'll just set it up for now and I already have added two fingerprints and there is the touch to unlock anytime. You can disable it if you don't want the touch to unlock feature to work. And in the more settings, this is how it looks like. We have the app content and stuff. There is the hide developer status from particular apps in case you need that. We have the ignore window secure flags and stuff right here. And we have even more features that you can notice from here. So first let's try the pickup gesture. I just lock the device. And if I put the device like this, and if I just pick it up on my hand, and as you can see, yes, the ambient display pickup gesture is actually working fine. And this is how it unlocks. Now let's try one more thing. That's the always on display. And here with the always on display, this is how it looks like. And the clock, double tap to wake. Yep, the animation definitely looks beautiful. So if you just double tap to wake, yes, that works. But in the lock screen, if you double tap, sometimes the double tap to sleep is not working. As you can see right now, the double tap to sleep is not working. So I have to double tap on the status bar. Only then the double tap to sleep will work in the lock screen. And yeah, I have to say this actually looks pretty beautiful. This Android 14 clock, I'm just loving it. Looks so much good than the previous clocks. Mostly when I compare it to the Android 13 clocks. Now the fingerprint scanner is actually working fine. Let's try one more time. Just notice the animation, how cool it looks. The always on display over here, I would say it's not too bright. It's pretty dim, I would say. So I think it won't consume that much battery. I have to actually reboot the device so that I can show you the reboot time and just because of face unlock I'm rebooting right now and I'll show you the rebooting time so from here in the power menu I'll just tap on restart and here I'll start the stopwatch and here I'm just testing the reboot time it reboots within about 25-24 seconds so that's really nice 
Now I just rebooted the device. Now I think I can test the face unlock and for that I'll just double tap to wake. And as you can see, it just unlocks straight up after a reboot. No issues. The auto brightness right now is pretty dim. I don't know why. But here there is no swipe up to unlock only for the face unlock. So that feature I simply miss, I have to say. As you can see right after I go into the lock screen, it actually starts recognizing with the face. Let's try one more thing. I'll just swipe up and then point the device towards my face. Yes, that works. But yeah, with the lock screen, it just tries to unlock with the face unlock all the time, I have to say. Now, let's talk about the overall UI performance. Well, in terms of the normal UI performance, you won't see any kind of lags or status because it's always running at mostly at 120 Hertz. So no issues whatsoever. So even in Twitter, scrolling and stuff, it's very smooth experience, no problems whatsoever. There are no lags or stutters at all. File switching between apps even, there is no problems at all. And even in YouTube, as you can see, everything is very smooth, no issues whatsoever. And even in Chrome, as you can see, it's just a very smooth buttery experience, I have to say. And even with this 8 GB RAM unit, my device, it's just flying with this particular ROM. No performance issues with this particular ROM, at least that I have seen. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you guys an idea about the overall UI performance with the benchmarks of this ROM. So if you ask me personally, what do I think about this particular ROM? Well, I switched to it because I have to say I faced a bug in the Evolution X ROM and I had to actually try this ROM as well. So I was thinking about it. So I just made the switch and my experience really has been one of the best that I have to say. This is definitely one of the best stable ROMs that I have seen for the Poco A5. And yes, this AOSP SK ROM I haven't tried earlier, but I was really, really surprised after trying it. But I have to mention some of the things that it doesn't have as much customizations as the Evolution X ROM. But if you like this minimal kind of customization with a lot of stability, I can definitely recommend you guys flashing this ROM. But one thing I have to mention about this is that the last update I got about this ROM is of 12th December 2023. When I'm shooting this video today, it's 17th December. I don't see any kind of new update as of today. So yeah, the updates are not as much frequent as Evolution X. So if you love updates on the custom ROMs, you will be not actually getting too much updates on this ROM. So this will come around like within two or three weeks, or maybe if there is a bug, maybe a hotfix will come. So I think the updates are not maybe as consistent as the Evolution X ROM. But yeah, overall, I have to say this is really one of the best experiences that you will get based on Android 14 on the Poco A5. I'm really, really impressed. So let me know in the comments what you guys think and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if you feel like. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.